2.5 goes over solving compound inequalities. Compound inequalities are literally two inequalities that are brought into one. These are either and or or inequalities. So we have something that's an and inequality. If you look here on the left side of this um, description, your and statements or inequalities have a line that connects on your number line. Your or inequalities have two numbers that go opposite ways of each other on the number line. So with these, you got to be careful with the way that your wording is or the way that you're given your inequality. So with an and inequality, you'll either see the word and in between the two inequalities or you'll see it like you see there where it's the 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 5. They mean the same exact thing. An or inequality will always be separated with the word or. Okay. If we look at example one, we're writing each sentence as an inequality and graphing each inequality. So for A, it says a number X is greater than negative eight and less than or equal to four. So X is greater than negative eight and X is less than or equal to four. On our number line, since it is an AND statement, we are going to have an open circle on that negative 8, a closed circle on that 4, and that line will go in between the two. So if it's an AND statement, all of those numbers that it, those inequalities include have to be represented. And it's only those numbers. So with this, you have x is greater than negative 8 and x is less than or equal to 4. So the numbers that are greater than negative 8 with that inequality are only those numbers from negative 8 to positive 4 because you have the x is less than or equal to positive 4 as well. Same thing with the x is less than or equal to negative 4. It's not every number to negative infinity that it includes. It's only the numbers to negative 8 that are less than the, the 4. For example, B, we have a number Y is at most 0 or at least 12. At most means less than or equal to. So this is going to be Y is less than or equal to 0 or Y is at least 12. At least means that um, that's greater than or equal to. So that's Y is greater than or equal to 12. So you'll see here, your variable comes first on both of these. Your signs point away from each other. So on your number line, you're going to have that 0. You'd have a closed circle on the 0, and your line would go to the left. You have a closed circle on the 12, and your line would go to the right. For example, C, we have a number D is more than 0 and less than 10. So a number D, that would be D, is more than, means is greater than 0, and D is less than 10. So you'll see here, when this is separated like this, using the, word, the term and, you have your two signs that point in towards each other, which means your line is going to connect in between two circles. So with this, we can actually rewrite it as 0, is less than D, which is less than 100. I prefer to write it this way, so you'll always see my answers like this. And then when I go to graph it, it should be 0. That should be 10, not 100. I'm sorry. When I go to graph it, I'm going to have a 0, a 10. I have two open circles, and I have an and statement, so my line connects between the two circles. For D, we have a number A is fewer than negative 6 or no less than negative 3. So we have A is fewer than means is less than negative 6, or A is no less than means greater than or equal to 
So a is greater than or equal to than that negative 3. So we can leave it that way. On our number line, we're going to have a negative 6. I'm going to do a negative 6, negative 4, negative 2. The, sign, the one in between the negative 4 and the negative 2 would be that negative 3. So I'm going to have an open circle on that negative 6. I'm going to have a closed circle on that negative 3. My line on that negative 6 is going to go to the left. The line on my, th my negative 3 is going to go to the right. When we solve compound inequalities, we can take these and statements and turn them into two separate inequalities and solve both and bring them back into an and statement, or we can just solve from what they give us. If we solve from what they give us, what you do to the middle, you have to do to all parts, so each side. So if we look at example 2a, we have negative 4 is less than x minus 2, which is less than 3. That 2 has to move away from the x because the only thing you want in the middle of this is the x. So in order to move it, we do the opposite operation. So we would add 2 to both sides or to all sides. These 2's would cancel. So we have negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2, is less than x. And then 3 plus 2, which is 5. So negative 2 is less than x which is less than 5. If we go to graph this, we're going to have an open circle on that negative 2, an open circle on that 5, and then our line would go in. For b, we have negative 3 is less than negative 2x plus 1, which is less than or equal to 9. So again, what I'm going to do to the middle to get x by itself, the first thing I want to do is move that 1 away from it. So I'm going to subtract the 1. When I do it to the middle, I do it to the right side, and I do it to the left side as well. So the 1s would cancel in the middle. The negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, is less than negative 2x, which is less than or equal to 9 minus 1, which is 8. From here, we're going to divide every part by that negative 2. Remember, when you're dividing by a negative, you flip the signs. So I'm going to circle my signs as well to remind myself to switch them. The negative 4 divided by negative 2 is just a positive 2. I switch my sign to be greater than. Then there's x. Then I switch my sign again is greater than or equal to. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Now, this is not written correctly because the smallest number should come first. So we have to rearrange the way that this is written to where it's negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 2. So this is the correct way to write this. And then if we were to graph it on our number line, we can do negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. We are going to have a closed circle on that negative 4, an open circle on that 2, and our line goes in between the two circles. For example, C, we have 3y minus 5 is less than negative 8, or 2y minus 1 is greater than 5. So we are going to first solve the one on the left, then solve the one on the right. For the first one, I'm going to move that 5 over by adding it to both sides. So I get 3y is less than negative 3. I then divide each side by that 3 to get that y is less than negative 1. For the inequality on the right, I'm going to add the 1 to both sides. I get 2y is greater than 6, then I divide each side by the 2 to get that y is greater than 3. Once I'm done with these two inequalities, I have to rewrite this as an OR statement. So I'm just going to take both inequalities, so y is less than negative 1, and add in that OR in between them. So y is less than negative 1, or y is greater than 3. This is my compound inequality, that's my answer. To graph this, I have a negative one. 
and a 3. And then I'm going to have an open circle on that negative 1, and my line's going to go to the left. An open circle on that 3, and my line goes to the right. For example, D, we have 5 is less than or equal to M plus 4, which is less than 10. So again, I want to get that variable by itself. So I'm going to subtract the 4. I'm going to do it to the 10 as well as the 5 as well. So I get that M by itself in the middle. I have the 5 minus 4, which gives me 1, and the 10 minus 4, which gives me 6. So 1 is less than or equal to M, which is less than 6. you got to think. This is the same thing as saying m is greater than or equal to 1 and m is less than 6. So you see these two signs point in towards each other. So you know on your graph you're going to have a graph or a number line that has your 1, your 6, and then your signs on the 1 is going to be closed, your circle on the 6 is, op is open, and the line just connects the two points. For our next example, E, we have th negative 3 is less than 2K minus 5, which is less than 7. So with this one, I'm going to start by moving that 5, and I'm going to add it to every part. Those 5s cancel. I have negative 3 plus 5, which is 2, is less than 2K, which is less than 7 plus 5, and that's 12. From here, I'm still getting K by itself, so I'm going to divide every part by the 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Keep dropped on your sign. You dropped on the k. Dropped on the next sign. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So again, remember, this is the same thing as saying k is less than 1 and k is greater, is less than 6. I'm sorry. So on your number line, you have that 1, you have that 6, you have open circles on both of these, and then your line goes in towards each other. For example, F, we have 4C plus 3 is less than or equal to negative 5, or C minus 8 is greater than negative 1. So I'm first going to solve the 1 on the left. I'm going to subtract that 3 from each side. I have 4C is less than or equal to negative 8. Then I divide each side by the 4 to get that c is less than or equal to negative 2. For the one on the right, I'm going to add the 8 to both sides. And that gives me c is greater than 7. So I rewrite this to be 1 compound inequality. And this is going to give me c is less than or equal to negative 2. Or c is greater than 7. If it helps you to circle that or in the beginning in your first inequality that they give you, do that so that way you remember to rewrite it as an or statement at the end. For your number line, you're going to have that negative 2, you'll have that 7. You're going to have a closed circle on that negative 2 and an open circle on that 7. It's an or statement, so these lines go away from each other. For example, E, or sorry, G, we have 2P plus 1 is less than negative 7, or 3 minus 2P is less than or equal to negative 1. So for this one, on the left, we're going to subtract the 1 from each side. We get 2P is less than negative 8. Then we just divide by the 2 and get that P is less than negative 4. For the one on the right, I'm going to start by subtracting the 3 from each side. So we have negative 2p is less than or equal to negative 4. Then I divide each side by the negative 2. I switch my sign. So p is greater than or equal to positive 2. Again, I was given an OR statement, so I rewrite this as an OR statement. p is less than negative 4, or p is greater than or equal to 2. On my number line, I'm going to find that negative 4. I'm going to find that 2. 
that negative 4 gets an open circle with a line that goes to the left, the 2 gets a closed circle with a line that goes to the right. Our next example tells us that electrical devices should operate effectively within a specified temperature range. Outside the operating temperature range, the device may fail. A says write and solve the compound inequality that represents the possible operating temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit of the smartphone. So your textbook gives you a smartphone or a picture of a really, really old iPhone um, that tells you that the operating temperature is zero degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. So we want to represent this in degrees Fahrenheit. So we can give ourselves an inequality that's zero is, it's going to be a, a and statement. Zero is less than or equal to the degrees in Celsius, which is less than or equal to 35. From here, we have to turn that degree Celsius into degrees Fahrenheit. In order to turn Celsius into Fahrenheit, you would multiply the number by 9 over 5 times F minus 32. So we're just going to rewrite this with 0 is less than or equal to 9 fifths times F minus 32, which is less than or equal to 35. From here, we would divide each side by that 9 fifths, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we multiply the 0 by 5 ninths as well as the 35 by the 5 ninths. So this is going to give us 0 is less than or equal to F minus 32, which is less than or equal to, I'm sorry, this 9 fifths is supposed to be 5 ninths, not 9 fifths. Hold on, let's erase this. This and this and this, as well as this, get switched. All right. So, this is supposed to be 9 over 5, 9 over 5, these cancel, we're multiplying this by 9 over 5, is it, oh my gosh, this and this. Okay, so the, the 35 would turn into a 7, making the 5 a 1. So we we're just doing 7 times 9, which is 63. From here, you can add the 32 to each side, or to every side. And we just get 32 is less than or equal to F, which is less than or equal to 95. For your last example, it tells us to write and solve a compound inequality that represents the temperature rating in the degrees Fahrenheit of the winter boots. So it tells us that it's from negative 40 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. So we're going to do the same exact thing that we did for the last one. We are going to have negative 40 is less than or equal to C, which is less than or equal to 15. So with this, we're going to change that C to be your formula to turn it into degrees Fahrenheit. So that's just going to be negative 40 is less than or equal to 5 ninths times F minus 32, which is less than or equal to 15. We're going to divide each side by that 5 ninths and multiply by the reciprocal. So that's 9 over 5. these would cancel. So we're going to have the 15 that turns into a 3, making the 5 a 1. The 5 on the 9 fifths times the negative 40 is going to turn into 1, making the negative 40 a negative 8. So that's negative 72 is less than or equal to F minus 32, which is less than or equal to 3 times 9, which is 27. From here, we add the 32 to all sides. cancel. So we have negative 72 plus 32, which gives us negative 40, is less than or equal to F 
which is less than or equal to 27 plus 32, which is 59.